Hello everyone, Morgan from Mirror Edge Networks and you join me today in Oranjezucht, Cape Town. I hope that you enjoy this video overview of this project which we've been involved with since March 2022. It's now November 2023 and we've just handed over this amazing house to our client. We've catered for all of their network, audio, video and home automation services throughout the house and this is a detailed overview of what it took to deliver these parts of the project. I hope you enjoy this video. We've installed a control four system into this house. A control four system ties in all the different services from other electronic devices within the house. As an example, the control four touch panel that's on my side can open and close blinds within different rooms. It can turn on and off the air conditioning as well as adjust the temperature. We can turn on and off lights or dim lights as required. We're also able to control rooms like the home cinema or switch the TVs on in any of the bedrooms. From a nice big touch panel like this, it makes operation of the entire house much easier. Examples of this, of course, are being able to open and close blinds where we can touch the blinds icon on the touch panel and it can show us which blinds are open and we can open or close them as required. As mentioned, lighting control is also possible. If we go into the lighting settings of this room, it'll bring up all the different light circuits that are available in this room and we can simply switch on and off lights or we can fade up if they're a dimmer. We can also adjust the air conditioning. This is under the comfort settings of the control four system. We can go into the room. We can choose what we would like it to do, heat, cool, etc. If we choose cooling, we can set our temperature. It highlights it in a big, easy to see uh, icon and then air conditioning will switch on and it will start cooling the room. Here in South Africa, we refer to our window shades as blinds. Here on the touch panel it shows us that we have shades, we're able to go into the shades. In this room it shows us what the status of the shades are and we can of course close them and open them as required. Once again the interface that's required to be able to do this is a piece of hardware that Control 4 talks to. In this instance it's called a bond bridge and the bond bridge can talk to the SOMFI blinds to make sure that the blinds can open and close. The last functionality from the Control 4 touch panels is the ability to make intercom calls. This can be from one touch panel to another touch panel, as well as to the security guard hat. And when Foresight is installed, which is the ability to access the house externally from your mobile phone, you're also able to make intercom calls to your mobile phone. This means that if somebody arrives and rings the doorbell, it will ring through to your phone from anywhere in the world. Welcome to this home cinema. Conceptualized by Christian from Sphere Custom Design in June 2022, his team deployed the initial infrastructure, being the back wall construction and the front wall construction, which is behind me. More recently, our client has enlisted the help of GFP Lighting, where Sean Mackerel has designed an additional lighting system for us, which has been deployed and installed by Shane and his incredible team at Field Joiners. Behind me is a 130-inch acoustic transparent screen, which has a Samsung Ultra Short Throw Projector installed beneath it. We have a motorized mechanism, which Stuart Taylor from Definition designed and installed for us, which is activated from a single handheld remote control from Control 4 that as soon as you turn the room on, the projector opens and the screen gets illuminated. As is traditional on our installations, we have a projection screen wall at the front of this room. We describe this as a black framing that surrounds the projection screen and hides all of the speakers in the room. We have Wisdom Audio speakers installed behind this acoustic transparent black fabric, which provides us the optimal sound for the room, while not imposing on the design, the clean aesthetic that we have achieved in this home cinema room. 
This is the back wall construction of this home cinema where we have speaker boxes installed into this construction for our surround sound speakers. The subwoofer is also installed into this construction in the optimal location to give us the best bass response within the room. We also have the ability to install additional acoustic treatment into this back wall construction if required and we'll shape the sound as per the requirements once we've cali calibrated the room. Part of the updated design discussion that we had with our client was to integrate these LED details which were designed by Sean from GFP and implemented by Shane and his team from Field Joiners. This gives a lot more dimension to the back of the room so that when you walk in you have this beautifully accented back wall construction. While certain home cinema purists would shudder at the idea of having a completely glass wall on one side of the home cinema, our client had a specific requirement to be able to see this beautiful wine cellar that was built by field joiners. We enlisted the services of Jason and his team at Total Blind Design to install these curtains onto the wall of this home cinema room and through a home automation interface from Control 4, we were able to close the curtains when our client is watching movies or any TV shows. When our client has finished watching movies or TV shows and turns off the room, the curtains are automatically scheduled to open up again. One of the specific requirements from our client was to ensure that the FETSAC sofas were uh, integrated into this room perfectly. This is one of the most comfortable ways that I could imagine to watch movies. These FETSAC sofas are really, really a great way to be able to sit back and relax. For ease of use, when our client is ready to watch TV and turns on the room, the draw mechanism opens automatically. This is the equipment room where we have the audio, video and network equipment within this project. Over the duration of the past 18 months, since March 2022 up until now in October 2023, we have worked in this room to make sure that all of our cabling is installed from the house through to here as neatly as possible. Of course, what we have done is we've time-lapsed a certain sequence of that, particularly bringing the cabling down the cable tray and preparing it for the equipment riser that we've installed here to bring the cables up into these two racks. I hope that you enjoy a little bit of the detail behind that but the summary of this is that what we've got is all of the main network infrastructure for this project being the router, the PoE network switch that powers any Wi-Fi devices, Control 4 devices, the media server for this house, and obviously in the rack behind me, we've got all of the video and audio devices. This includes the Control 4 main controller, the DSTV decoders, the HD NEA video matrix that sends the DSTV signal out to the whole house, and of course, the cinema's surround sound AVR. I hope that you enjoy a few behind the scenes photographs and a bit of B-roll of this part of the project, which obviously includes things like cable management, ensuring that our cables are labeled correctly, and overall the preparation to ensure that the installation is carried out neatly and professionally like you see it behind me.
We've now progressed with the server room installation. What we've done is we've brought our cabling down the cable tray, of course, color coordinated for all the different services that we have in this house. We've brought the tray down and along the floor and we've installed a riser, which is basically just a shutter ply board that allows us to have holes in the riser that we can bring the cabling up into our two floor standing equipment racks. This is the network rack in this server room. And what we've done is we've uh, brought all of the equipment in in a logical format for us to be able to service and maintain the system. So starting at the top, we've got the network router, then we've got a patch panel where all of our cables terminate into. Then beneath that, we've got a network switch, and this allows us to have short network patch cables that go from everywhere in the house into the network switch for the different services. Beneath that, we've got our speaker pack patches, and we'll have a media pair that will be used in the cinema room and uh, we've got a network enabled PDU at the bottom of this rack. Network enabled PDU enables us to be able to log in remotely and power cycle devices by switching off the outlets of the network enabled PDU. But to focus back in, we've got a, you know, all of our Wi-Fi antennas are throughout the house, they're all plugged in and they're all online. Uh, obviously during the construction process, we've had a request to be able to enable the Wi-Fi so that connectivity on site is, is possible and uh, you know that's what's what's going on here a special note of course is that in uh, working through the process of installing the wi-fi antennas we've labeled all of the cables that are going to all the different locations this enables us to be able to determine which wi-fi antennas are online uh, check that their connectivity is working correctly and while we're busy finishing up the server rack we can obviously walk through the house and set all the right channel frequencies for the wi-fi antennas and make sure that their strength in each of the different rooms is set correctly so that we're not bleeding Wi-Fi from one room into the next room and causing signal interruptions. So uh, that's basically what's happening at the top of the network switch over here. In this rack, we're using an Arachnus router. This allows us to have many uh, cloud monitoring services through Oversee. It's a platform that Arachnus and Control4 use to be able to monitor devices remotely. Beneath that, we've obviously got our network switch, which I've mentioned before. And in this instance, we're using a Unify network switch. The Unify switch that's in here has PoE, which is power over ethernet. That means that this network switch can power devices within the house. Of course, our Wi-Fi antennas are all powered from here, but these pink cables that are also terminated here will plug into this PoE switch and the control four controllers throughout the house will be powered from this network switch as well. This network switch is 60% uh, PoE ports, so up to, uh, I think it's port 32 or 34 are PoE, and beyond that's just general data. So that's why we've uh, split off and have our orange and gray general data cables, which are not for PoE devices, into the last section of the switch. That gives us the most flexibility with the switch and also means that we're you know, spending our clients money in the right way to make sure that we're apportioning the right budget to a PoE switch that caters for enough PoE devices and enough general data devices. Of course, PoE switches have an additional price over non-PoE switches, so we try and make sure that we plan correctly to ensure that we're not overcapitalizing on PoE devices and PoE switches. This is the plant room on our client's property. On my right hand side, just out of this room, is a 100 kVA diesel generator and in this room we've got six inverters with a six battery backup solution. It was of critical importance for our client that there is absolutely no power interruptions for them. Both our clients on this project work from home extensively and run fairly large companies so we needed to make sure that there's absolutely no possibility of power interruption. Working with Ian McWilliam, electrical consultant, the transition from ESCOM grid power to the diesel generator to the battery backup solution is absolutely seamless so that there's no noticeable difference between the power changeover. This is of course really important for the network and Wi-Fi so there's no dropouts and of course from our personal perspective we're able to ensure that the cinema can operate at all times. Here in the plant room we've deployed Wi-Fi so that we can ensure that all of the inverters are connected to the network and the internet so that our client can monitor remote remotely and this also enables that when technicians are working here underground they're able to still communicate with us via WhatsApp etc so that they can make phone calls over voice over IP. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this video overview of this project here in Oranjezucht, Cape Town. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. If you're looking for these sorts of services for your own house, please reach out to us. This is a project which we've been actively involved with since March 2022. And over the last 18 months, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with our client to fulfill their requirements. We always enjoy the process as well as delivering the end result that we are very proud of and we'd be happy to assist you as well. So please reach out to us or subscribe to our YouTube channel and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.